What's up, guys? It's Mitch Dyer from IGN. I'm here with Mike Raphael, the eSports advisor here at Treyarch. We're going to check out the, uh, the eSports controls and all that good stuff going on with the eSports direction for Black Ops 2. Tell me all about it. That's right. So uh, we have shoutcasting controls here in Black Ops 2. We have an eSports initiative. Really wanted to support that scene. So what we're taking a look at here is what a shoutcaster would use, a production would use for uh, professional eSports leagues or anybody running a tournament, administering a tournament. They wanted to screen this out or broadcast it. These controls really allow for a much better spectator experience. It's, it's really easy to just kind of flick between players here, hit the right bumper, switch between them. Yeah, right, but so I, I can walk you through some of the things. So right here, we're in the picture-in-picture -picture mode. We're playing a domination game type on cargo. Uh, right now, it's 6v6. So you see a list of players on the picture-in-picture -picture here. You see that Woofy right now is on the B flag. You got He's got some help on the B flag from his teammates. Bandit's still on there. So he's down. There are lots of visual cues here, Mitch, that we can use. So the kills are listed in the kill streaks here. So you see that, that Scruffy's on a three kill streak. Rex is on a three kill streak, so you just swap over to him. And the controls are, are pretty intuitive. He gets taken <laughs> out by the assault shield there. So Stepping Scruff, that shock grenade probably did not help his cause. No, no, not really at all. So Rex wow. just calls in a care package here. We see that the score is 14 to nine, now 16 to 10 on the top of the uh, score panel up top. We see that this team over here on the left has the B and C flag by the icons. And all these visual cues that we put in here for the spectator to be aware of what's going on in the game. Eight minutes and 43 seconds left on the clock. And uh, why don't you pull up the overhead map, take a look at that, see what's going on, where the action is. So you're on board with Fido at the moment, Mitch. And tell me some of the things that you see here on the overhead yeah, map is, that give you a cue. This is really interesting. We can see the control points up top, the ABC, controlled by uh, blue team here. Now they're flashing, so they're losing control. Uh, in the middle, you can see B, and we, as we flip through the players, we can just kind of hop from one to the next. Rex took control of a wasp. Is that what it's called? A wasp? That's, yes, the Dragonfire yeah, Wasp. Yeah, so uh, the Dragonfire here is a quad rotor machine gun, <laughs> and it's actually really powerful. It uh, really allows you to get to places pretty quickly on the map. As you see, we're following Rex here. And so, uh, again, Black Ops 2 takes place in 2025, and this is a take on a futuristic score streak here. So uh, the Wasp is, is pretty deadly on Cargo. Cargo being a pretty quick, fast-paced, uh, fast, quick to the action map. So Rex is doing some work here with the Wasp. You're hearing the beeps. That's indicating that the Wasp is about to expire. And it looked like Rex did pick up quite a few kills there with it. Yeah, he and he's just kind of hovering over, patrolling that B flag. It was a smart decision. Uh, allowing yeah, it's his a really, team, really good spot, right? Yeah, allowing his team. Containers are changing all the time. Right, right, exactly. So he's just allowing his team to get into uh, the lead a little bit more. So Rex, um, actually Rex was on the opposite team, so oh, yeah. uh, it allowed his team to get that B flag, actually. They were down quite a bit. As we see, Rex tosses in uh, some C4 <laughs> there, picking up a nice kill with that. Let's see what else we got going on here. Scruffy's on a huge kill streak. Oh, Scruffy is on a massive kill streak at the moment. It looks like he's, he's got the out. assault shield. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Looks like he has a- He's holding up. Yeah, he's holding up. And it uh, looks like he wants to keep that streak. He's got a lightning strike score streak in the hole. <laughs> let's gonna see if go he can get it. this assault shield kill. There you it's go. There you there go. So it looks like Scruffy is on a tear with that thing right now. And his team is in the lead. Um, so what he's doing right now, we're him in third person. He's uh, He was on that data pack there. He had a couple score streaks that he was trying to play with right there at the moment. But he swapped over to Spike. Scruffy's still on that 13, 14 yeah, kill streak now. He was calling in his lightning strike. Now that's essentially um, a score streak that's going to allow you to pinpoint on the map where you want to drop that lightning strike in. And so you saw that he picked up a quick three kills that way. Let's go watch Bandit take over A. Oh, uh, Bandit nope, just so tried to take A, but he got smoked <laughs> right when he swapped. <laughs> Oh, he's having to run a bad luck. Uh, Scruffy again. That was another lightning strike. So what what kind of kill streak is Scruffy on right now? It's got to be pretty mean. Scruffy, let's bring him up. Where'd he go? 16 kills That's in a row. Let's swap back beast. and see what he's up to now. He's got a UAV. He can cast that in any time. What else do he have there on the side? What are those streaks specifically? Uh, looks like he has a, a, a lightning strike. Um, I'm still learning the icons as well as the esports advisor. <laughs> this is the alpha build. Yeah. So uh, you know he has a lightning strike on top. There goes the streak. Yeah, there goes the streak. Um, I'm not sure what the second one he has. Yeah, is it's actually. gonna be a stra one of the strafing runs. The plans. Yeah, it might be a it might be a strafing run. It might be a warthog. I'm not exactly sure, but the, I know that 
I know that he has a, a UAV there as well. So a lightning striking the UAV. I said, I'm still kind of learning the icons it, since this is the alpha build. It just got pushed out a few days ago. But um, 84, 77 with five minutes left. We got a pretty close game here. It's not a, not a huge gap. Yeah, no, it's super close. Five minutes left to go in this game right now. Scruffy got taken out, so he's not on that massive kill streak anymore. But you know what? He's being a team player. He's on the C flag at the moment. We're on board with Bobo. Picks up a nice kill right there. He's got the ACOG on the A94. So A94 with the, uh, hy uh, so the hybrid scope. He can actually swap that over to like a red dot site. So it's a uh, ACOG to red dot hybrid. He has the uh, option to switch that at any moment. But so it looks like he's deciding to kind of play with that ACOG site on it. Yeah, he's liking it. It's yeah. working for him though, why switch now? Oh, there he All goes. Right. He actually did just swap it to the oh, red dot. All right, all right. Oh, well, that's good. He gave us good <laughs> look while we're talking about it. So now Bobo's on an eight kill streak. Hey, he's and rocking it, he's doing well. Yeah, and his team actually just came back. They were on a huge deficit yeah, early on in the game because Scruffy was on that huge tear. Now Bobo looks like he's picking it up. Down by about 12, now up by about 12. Right. So four minutes left in the game. Mitch, what are some of the other things maybe you want to talk about? All right, let's, uh, I was thinking to, we, we, this auctions panel is really interesting to me because we can change all of the, the HUD on the eSports. Exactly, yeah. So um, we, we really wanted to make sure that the Shoutcaster had full capability to customize the experience for the spectator, right? Let's mess around with this stuff, see what we can do here. Yeah, so um, you can actually go in and so you're taking you're changing yeah, the score streaks right now. So now we're not even able to see the score streaks. Uh, we really like to keep it on. Yeah, yeah. So there you go, you're gonna keep that on. You can take the mini map off on top left of your screen if you'd like. Uh, so you, you went ahead and turned that off. You can actually customize the entire HUD here. So uh, team score you just turned off. I mean, you can, you turn all this stuff off, you're gonna, basically essentially only see the kill feed, which uh, could be nice to look at, you know, turn the score streaks off there. If you want to turn both those off, we can kind of show you what it looks like. There you go. So now nice all you have, you seat. can actually turn the nameplate off as well, I believe. So nameplate's right near the top. Uh, gone. There you go. Boom. Pretty clean this after the scoreboard. You can turn off the scoreboard as well if you'd like. And uh, I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we keep the scoreboard <laughs> there. So now all you have is essentially the scoreboard and the player's first person point of view. This red team is really cleaning up. They, they came back huge. That, is, that, that score gap is no joke right now. Right. Yeah, See what so, Rex is doing. So that, going back to that options panel, though, Mitch, yeah. you know, we, these, these are really customizable. So obviously, we were able to kind of change the whole viewer experience on the fly in the game. And spectators, or sorry, shoutcasters can. Uh, really be versatile in the way they want to display the game. That assault shield That's just blocked the knife right there. That's oh not my how gosh. Work, I don't think. <laughs> it's another reason to use that assault shield, right? You know, yeah, you it's really it's on your back, you prevent getting knifed in the back, yeah. right? So I, mean, I think it's a pretty cool little feature with the assault shield. There goes the C4 getting the hit marker there. And now we don't have nameplate, so I don't no, know who I have we're no following. Idea who this is. Now this is just a straight up blank screen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's nice and clean though. We can, yeah, we, we know that Max killed whoever that was, ourselves. but. <laughs> all right, let's throw all this back on. Yeah, let's throw it all back on here. <laughs> what are we missing here? On, on, everything on. I love it. There you go. So now we're all back on, fully loaded as a shoutcaster. And now we're back into that map overhead view. Yeah, this map, map screen is really cool because you can see where everyone's converging. You can see like the blue team is tight, but the red team is really spread out. But they're all kind of converging on the same same area. Right. Uh, obviously, they have no idea where each other are. Unless yeah. They have the and let me tell you why this map overhead is so important. Uh, we really want to be able to give the shoutcaster full ability to get back into the action as fast as possible. So let's say there's a player that takes a death and uh, he's on respawn. While he's dead, you know, and he's on his respawn watching the kill cam, whatever, we can swap to that map overhead view right. and really see where the action's about to go down. And we can either swap players or stay on board with the player that's on respawn and see exactly how it's gonna, how long it's gonna be before you can get back into the action. Let's and do that now. Yeah, Nobody there you go. Max just died, Not he spawned over in the corner. Problem. And there you go, quick quick swap over the Shadow who was on the B flag. He gets taken out. And there you go, you see Fido is tossing a smoke out of the B flag. He's got an enemy on it right now. He's gonna go ahead and make a move for it. Can he get that kill? He's it's right contested. There. <laughs> yeah. And there you go, Fido saves the day. Grenades right in the middle. Get that off the flag, dude. You got like three players clustered up right there. What a mess. <laughs> so 180, 181 to 142 is the score on the board. 35 30 seconds, seconds to left to go. So, and that's another feature. We really wanted to make sure that uh, this is similar to a sports match, right? When you flip the channel on television to a sporting game, you really want to be able 
to decipher all the information as quickly as possible. So whenever you turn, tune into a Call of Duty esports event, you see, okay, I know exactly how much time's on the clock. I know what the score is. I know what team's in the lead. This is the player that we're watching. So all these elements of the HUD here really play a factor into the esports initiative and essentially what esports leagues and tournaments or events can do with the game and you know, display it to their viewers. So yeah. hope and you enjoyed it's, it. It's worth noting that anyone who plays Black Ops, you can just hop into a showcast team and you can do exactly what we're doing now. Just hang out, talk about the match you're watching. Exactly. Awesome. Thanks for joining me, Mitch. Hey, thank you. Yeah.